This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available coffee, teas, chocolate, and other products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well. And now, Fairfax Breakfast Club with your host, Basil Lemba. Welcome to the Fairfax Breakfast Club show. My name is Basil Lemba and I will be your host. The Fairfax Breakfast Club is a weekly program in which we bring to you valuable and workable know-how you can use to improve your networking skills and grow your business. We always start the show with a quote and today's quote is, people are given lifelike images and specifics that help them understand exactly what the structure is going to look like when it is finished, down to the color of the paint, I would say. With us today in the studio, we have someone with those renderings, somebody who will help you see exactly and precisely how your project will be like. Her name is Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, Basil. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Okay, tell us about how do you get into the renderings business? Well, I, um, I started doing it for a contractor who said, mm -hmm. hey, I'm really you know, looking for someone who can help me out with this. I'd like to take it into some bids um, to compete with some of the bigger design build firms. I'd like to have some 3D pictures to mm -hmm. take in. Um, and as I did some of those for him, I thought, you know, there's really no one that does this for homeowners. Mm -hmm. Contractors will do it for homeowners, mm -hmm. but there's no one that will work independently. You know, sort of like the Property Brothers, where they come in and roll out the new kitchen on the laptop and you can walk around and change things. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what, people might really like to do that, mm -hmm. to see how that small sample of tile is really going to look on a large scale in their bathroom or in their kitchen before they, before they buy it. Mm -hmm. Because often you can't take back, <laughs> you know, they won't take the tile back or they'll charge <laughs> you a restocking fee, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, or you live with it and you mm -hmm. think, oh, I really wish I hadn't done mm -hmm. that. So, um, so yeah, so we, um, you know, we, we do work with homeowners from anywhere, really, okay. uh, local. It can be anywhere in the U.S. because we can work entirely virtually. If you're local, they will come out and take measurements. Okay. And, um, and then kind of talk to you about what's important to you. Um, are you doing a kitchen? Are you doing a, um, say for instance, a TV room and watching cool. football is really important to you. So you're thinking about trying to set up your TV room but you're worried about where the sun is going to come in and hit your TV oh, during okay. football. So mm -hmm. we can work with the exact sign angles where they're going to come into your house to help you see how that's going to affect your TV viewing at a certain time of the day. Okay. So say four o'clock when, you know, when the game comes on. Mm -hmm. So, so you are in the field of interior designing, I should say. I am not an interior designer. Um, okay. I am not a builder. Mm -hmm. I'm not licensed in either of those fields. I do work with an interior designer. If, okay. if clients want those services, we Got it. offer okay, them. Mm -hmm. um, but what I you are like a painter. I'm I mean, kind like of a like a painter. Mm -hmm. um, really, what I'm doing is taking your ideas mm -hmm. or maybe your builder's ideas, um, if if you want that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm taking those and putting them, bringing them to life so gotcha. you can see what you're getting beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, you asked me how I got started. Uh, I had pl been playing around with this for the, the contractor, kind of learning the software and, and getting a feel for it. And mm -hmm. I was trying to, I have been trying to convince my husband to let me paint the kitchen cabinets for mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. since we moved in. They were in, in good shape, um, just a nice, 
General Cherry. Um, it just wasn't my style, but okay. I couldn't convince him. He wasn't sure how it was gonna look, and once you paint him, you can't go back, and so it was kind of a big deal, and as I was playing around, I put our kitchen in there, and I put all the, the dimensions, I put our exact flooring, the countertops, everything in there, and then I changed the color of the cabinets to the color that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, honey, look, this is what it would look like. Are you okay with that? And he's like, yeah, actually, that looks really good. It brightens up the room. Yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I The rest thought, is history? The rest is history. I thought people would really, really enjoy this. You mm -hmm. know, we do offer the services to builders as well, small to mid-size, or anybody that doesn't do it in-house to mm -hmm. help you um, kind of uh, uh, present yourself a little better to your clients. You know, instead of giving them a, a sketch, in the initial bid process. You can come in with a 3D drawing of your ideas and say, you know, based on what we talked about, here's my here's my idea of what I think you want. Well, let's use this as a jumping off point. We can play around with it, get it exactly how you want it, so that we're speaking the same language. You know, it's like, um, when you go to a hairdresser mm -hmm. and you kind of have an idea, well as a woman I have ideas mm -hmm. of how I want my hair to look. So I go in and I tell her, oh I want, um, I want a dark blonde. Well to her that means something different than it means to me. She has her, so. she has her stylist lingo and I have oh. mine. And they're, they're usually um, very different. So what to me is a dark blonde, to her, is um, is more brown, you know. Some some stylists would consider the color I have as blonde, and I think you're crazy. But that so, you know, I for contractors it's sort of the same thing. A contractor saying, hey, let's do this and let's let's move this wall and let's make this bigger and let's put a doorway here and you think, okay, that sounds great, but I can't really see it. Or, hey, Mr. Builder, can you do this? Can you do that? And they're, they're thinking something different because they have their professional terms that they work with day to day. Oh, and you are asking for what you think they are listening for, but it's not always the same thing. This ensures that builders and clients stay on the same page. Got it. So in the middle of a remodeling project, for instance, um, and a builder needs to make a change, uh, often they'll come to the homeowner and say, you know, we need, I, I think we need to put in, we need to do this with the roof line based on, you know, I, some framing issue or something. Like I said, I'm not a builder, I don't know the terms, but you know, we need to do this. It's gonna kinda look like this. I need to know because I, I got my framers here, they're ready to go, the roofers are trying to get started, I need you to make a decision. And you know that builder is going to leave when the project's done. You, as a homeowner, are kind of stuck with that <laughs> roof line. You're not really sure what any of those words mean. What's a truss? I don't even know. Is it a gable? I have I, no idea. When the builder can bring this to you and say, "This is a picture. This is what it's going to look like in your house. This is your house. I need you to make to sign off on this change or not." Because once that change is made, mm -hmm. you know you're stuck with it as a homeowner, or the builder's taking it out if you you know, can convince him to do that, but he's not happy, you're not happy, and somebody's paying for it. Mm. This, I feel like, um, can kind of alleviate some of that. Okay. Confusion. Uh, can, well, confusion. Or clarify oh, things well, to be precise. Yes, same thing with landscapers. We work with landscapers as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's hardscapes, decks, and that sort of thing. You can see how it's gonna impact your property. You can see where that hot tub is gonna sit. You might not realize that your neighbor's looking down on you from their screened in porch above until, you know, but then you put the hot tub in and, and you're stuck. You know, there's, there's nothing you can do. So um, kind of having it all out there yeah. like that, instead of just getting the, the typical squiggles and lines and you're writing a big check, mm -hmm. you know, it's nice you get, to, you get to see that. You can see the stone that you pick. Mm -hmm. You can see all of that right out there and, um, and you can make your choices from there. You can say, no, I don't like that stone. Put that in there. Mm -hmm. And then the landscaper knows exactly what you're talking about. Okay. Or that tree. You can go to, the land, to um, a garden store, a nice little bush can grow up to be a really big bush. Mm -hmm. And it says it on the tag. But you know, you don't really always 
see that, we can put that, that bush in there exactly where it would be on your house and grow it out 10, 20, 15 years to maturity and you can see that that tiny little privet is now a big thing and you're either going to have to manage it constantly pruning it you know, every month to keep it from overshadowing your window or you're going to buy something else. So it's a kind of a try it before you buy it, test drive <laughs> sort of thing. No before you go? And no before you go. Yeah, yeah I mean, you can't take these things back. Mm -hmm. it, it's very difficult once you've planted that tree and it's been there a couple of years. <laughs> Chances are the nursery isn't shaking that back. And then you're, you know, you're kind of, well, I wish my landscaper would have told me that. And mm -hmm. you know, he's probably thinking, well, I tried to tell you, but you didn't understand. Okay. You know what I mean? Because again, not speaking the same terms. Gotcha. So. so what is your biggest challenge and what do you do? Oh, my biggest challenge in what I do, you mean aside from the, the business, the no, marketing in the business. side? What is the biggest challenge in your business? You don't um, have much competition around here, do you? I really don't, but in, you know, that's actually part of the problem. The challenge is um, getting people to understand what it is that I do. Um, and that these services are offered to them. You know, it's pretty easy to get a, a builder uh, or a landscape or even architect or designer to say, hey, do you need somebody to do your renderings? We can do this for you. Uh, and they get it. Uh, but homeowners have only seen the TV shows, like Property Brothers. Mm -hmm. um, they see that and think, oh wow, that's really cool. I wish I had somebody that could do that for me. Mm -hmm. Well, I can, that's what I do. But it's, I, my uh, difficult thing is to get people to realize that it's out there, that it is available for them. You don't have to go on TV mm -hmm. to get it. How, how are you going to solve that problem? Oh, well, I'm here right now, so <laughs> this is a start. Um, you know, it's, I feel like the first um, year well, you have or so... Some, you brought some work, right? I did. I did bring some work. Uh -huh. So, And it is a very visual thing. Um, the, the first... Um, set of drawings that I sent you, well they're not drawings, um, or that you're going to see, are, um, I have one that's from a builder, and all he sent me was a sketch. Mm -hmm. So it, and it's actually a wine room that he is looking to build, and he sent me the sketch, and he said, hey, I'm kind of under a tight time frame, can you render this for me and get it back? I want to see if my customer will sign off on this and see if he's interested in doing it. So um, so we took that sketch and in about three days we sent him back two different versions of the wine room that um, he had asked to see with the, the wine barrel in different places mm -hmm. and, um, and then he took that and ran. Mm -hmm. um, another one um, we have is a family room in Falls Church where the couple, it was more of a space planning thing and they couldn't figure out if the kind of chairs they wanted in the configuration was going to fit in their room. Mm -hmm. you know, and they didn't want to purchase these, I believe there were five um, glider rocking chair um, uh, type, um, type seats. And they said, you know, this is come out, take a look at it. So I did, and we did some measurements, and they let me know what furniture had to stay, what could go. And so I got a feel for the, for the dimensions of the room. And I took that and I went online and I found some chairs mm -hmm. that would fit. And mm -hmm. I, I sent them an email, here's, here's the chairs I'm using. Mm -hmm. If you are interested in this is where you, you can buy them. And here's different views of the room with these chairs in it. So you can see, yes, they will fit. You know, there's not a lot of room uh, mm -hmm. between them, but they were okay with that. They really just wanted to know that if they bought these chairs, is this gonna fit? Or do they have to go back to a couch? Gotcha. So that kind of solved that problem okay. for them. Okay. So, um, and I believe another set um, I sent you was of some landscaping mm -hmm. pictures, a, a backyard. Uh, a couple was trying to plan whether they could fit a sauna and pool house in their backyard. So we put that in there and um, kind of, um, and, then, and then they came back and said, oh, well, what if we built this into this gazebo area into a, um, a bar, mm -hmm. like a, a built-in, a grill? Gotcha. kind of thing and they kind of gave me the idea for that that they wanted so we put that in and they could see how all of it worked together before mm -hmm. even committing to anything really okay so and 
Um, the last one is a before and after of a kitchen, which actually happens to be my kitchen, and I really wish it were <laughs> would have been cleaner for the picture. Um, but it was taken uh, just just when we started, and I took it quick before I left, and um, so it is a mess. But it it shows you um, you know just just the difference that uh, you know a gallon of paint can make mm -hmm. on a cabinet. So that's kind of of what we did. Okay. So I have realtor friends that use it. Um, to kind of show their clients the potential in a house mm -hmm. uh, that they they may be looking to buy. Um, also use it as closing gifts for clients who... Um, closing gift, what do you mean? A closing gift. Many, most realtors, um, and I did real estate for a while, most realtors mm -hmm. will give their clients a gift at closing. Kind of a thank you um, for doing that and... Um, oh, they'll do the design for the... Well, they'll give them a, a voucher a for me. And then oh, I'll sit down ah, with the homeowners I and see. say, you know, they've just purchased and, you know, usually people come in with so many ideas and changes they want to make in the house. Mm -hmm. And so they sit down with me, you know, for $150, $200, we sit down and we go through everything and we, we put it into, um, into 3D for them so they can, they can see all these ideas now that they, they have plans and whether they're actually going to do them or not and they can take it and go. I don't... Um, have a contractor that I'm tied to, so you're not going to be getting calls from from you know a builder saying, "Hey, are you ready to start? Are you you know you know when are we going to go? Are you going to sign the contract?" It's not that. Once I uh, I work with you and I do the the renderings and hand them over to you, they're yours to do what you want with. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I'm on to the next thing. Call me if you want to change anything. Okay. But yeah. Okay. So you mentioned that it was realtor before. Does that experience help you in what you do today? Um, well, I think it added to it. I mean, I love houses. Mm -hmm. Real estate confirmed that. But what I realized in doing real estate was that I loved the actual, the homes more than the business and selling side of real estate. You know, the people side, it's hard. Real estate is a really hard business to do. Um, and what I took away from that was I just want to focus on the homes themselves, what the kitchens, because I would walk in with clients and I'd be thinking of ideas of what to do with the kitchen. So, I mean, that as, was- As opposed to selling? As opposed to selling, <laughs> right. I mean, that's really what I, I thought when I got my real estate license. Oh, I'm going to go get to see a bunch of pretty houses. <laughs> no, <laughs> and I'm going to get paid to do have it. The key. No. I can get it, right. no problem. You know, not so much. It was not that easy. <laughs> and so, you know, I left that in way more qualified hands than mine and I <laughs> took this from it so <laughs> it's, it's you know I, I know when to when to get out <laughs> good for you <laughs> but it is it's a really tough business and you know I'm so impressed with anyone that can stick with it and you know and and make a go of it I couldn't so I, I took the house piece away okay very good. with me that's what I did all right now I have a, a different, totally different question what would you consider your biggest success in life my biggest success in life, life yeah. uh, my four kids and my husband, okay, my good. family, without mm -hmm. a doubt. Mm -hmm. I mean, good. really, if we don't have people and family and the next generation, mm -hmm. I can, you know, I can render all the houses I want, but <laughs> it's not going to make a difference in the world. I'll make your kitchen pretty and pictures. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to build your kitchen. It's a picture. Mm -hmm. uh, my kids are, you know, we're raising the next generation. That's, Absolutely. You know, that's my greatest success. It's my my greatest job, my greatest challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, and and really, I'm doing this to help provide for them. Mm -hmm. And college is not cheap, and it's coming mm -hmm. up. But you know, I want to make um, their lives better, mm -hmm. and you know, and and um, and show them that I'm more than just a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. And you know. Well, we went to learn this one. So, and not that that's a bad thing, and I've done it for uh, almost 12 years, mm -hmm. and I've really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, now I've found um, another passion mm -hmm. that doesn't equal that, mm -hmm. but it also, you know, shows my kids that you can have it all. Mm -hmm. You can stay home, you can work, you can raise a family, you can, mm -hmm. you know, do what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. It's called a senior profession. It's a what? It's called a senior profession. A senior profession? <laughs> yes. Why is that? Being mother. 
are taking care of families called the senior profession. Wow. Sometimes in the arena of networking, I, I met some people, maybe they were invited by somebody, and then they say, oh, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. A stay -home mom. Justice. Too. You know, I said that, yeah. and that's why I, I clarified it because really, it isn't. It's a full-time job without a paycheck. It is a senior it's, profession. Uh, yeah. And not just a profession. It is the senior profession. It is. I, you know, and I love it. I love it. It's a lot of fun. It's not easy, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of fun. So my greatest success, and I hope I can, can count it as a success. Looking back. Years well, who down decide? The road. Who decide to count it as a success? Who decides mm -hmm. the level of success? Of no, you decide of the success. You decide that is a lesson. Right, that's success. what I'm saying. I hope I look back and say, yeah, I did oh, my I job. Oh, I see what I mean. Okay, I see what I mean. I did my job. Okay. Uh -huh. You know, not motherhood as a whole, but mm -hmm. me. Did I do my job? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the, the concerns that I have now as well, starting this business, is am I focusing on my family enough? I have uh, three of my children are older. They're in elementary school, going into middle school, and I have a two-year-old. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, more than I would like, I'm working and doing my thing, and he's kind of running around the house, or he's watching TV, and, and I know he kind of misses that mom time, too, so I have to find that balance now mm -hmm. that I haven't had to in a very long time. Gotcha. So um, I, work, I worked full time up until I had my, my um, first child. And since then, you know, I, I didn't continue working. So I haven't ever had to balance work and family. I mean, I did a little bit in real estate and that was hard. Mm -hmm. But it, this, is, this is a different thing because I love it. Mm -hmm. I love what I'm doing. I also love being with my kids and there's a lot of guilt with that. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the things when I look back, yeah, I want to, I want to feel that this choice that I'm making to start this business was a good choice for the family mm -hmm. and not that it took me away from them gotcha. too much. So, um, and you know, I really couldn't do that without my husband who beds over backwards to help me make this possible and you know he took time off of work now to be with the kids so, mm -hmm. because it's a juggle, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a balancing act. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, good. So now, how are you going to grow, planning to grow your business? Uh, well, um, by attending the networking events, okay. like the Breakfast Club. Okay. Um, well, tell the audience your experience. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> I love the Breakfast Club. It was great. You know, I've only been once. I do plan to go mm -hmm. in the future. The timing is, again, hard mm -hmm. um, with the little one. But, um, you know, I've, I've had a one-on-one -on -one, um with one of the members uh, last week mm -hmm. so it was great I mean it gave me a chance to get back out there mm -hmm. without much of a commitment mm -hmm. you know to, to work on I'm not a, a, I wasn't a marketing major my majors were in French and international relations they had nothing to do with business or marketing uh -huh. so I you know kind of by going to the the um, the breakfast club and events like that I'm, I'm learning that okay. side of it in, a, in an easy you know um, no obligation, kind uh -huh. of. It's not uh, the no pressure uh -huh. situation, uh, and I'm enjoying it. Okay. It's good. So that's kind of a, it's jumping in with both feet, uh -huh. and kind of I just kind of close my eyes and go. Yeah. I'm not ever sure what I'm going to say or how I'm going to introduce myself to someone in those, but uh, that's part of it. And um, you know, I I do try to. Um, you know, give a little back to the community. That gets my name out there. You know, I donate services to silent auctions at schools and things like that. Okay. So, um, and I hope to do more of those in the future, you know, help sponsor local races and, and events like that. Um, because, you know, as much as, as doing this is for me, I it couldn't be doing this without the community that I live in. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's that's part of it, and um, really through word of mouth, I think, is going to be the key for yeah, me. Yeah, definitely a big advertisement. But also, I would have to mention that you'll be coming at the expo we have on June twenty. I am. You're yeah. right. We're, we're you know, that. one step at a time. I can't even think <laughs> till June, and that was another thing. I I signed up for that after the first Breakfast Club thing. Uh, without, I didn't give it too much thought. I just said, you know, I think this is a thing for me. Uh -huh. I've got to try it out. Uh -huh. The um, you know, it wasn't a huge financial commitment. I thought, okay, all right, I can do this, and I'm going to do it before I think about it. Uh -huh. So kind of, <laughs> kind of like doing this show. <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, my kids kept asking, Mommy, are you nervous? Mm, 
not really thinking about it too much. <laughs> it's kind of the way I, I go. If I stop to think about it, I overthink it, mm -hmm. and then I don't do it. Good. So I can think of 20 different reasons not to do something. If I just go, then I, you know, I wind up here, and this was, you know, much easier than I ever expected it to mm. be, so. Our events are rather easy to handle, be it the breakfast, the show, or the expo. Uh -huh. uh, the spirit are very, very, very much the same. I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. I really am. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I've not had any experience with anything like that, so I hope I'm prepared. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> while, uh, while we are here on the subject, you should know that the next, uh, next time we have the event on April 17, we'll have a session for the exhibitor. Yes, I saw the emails on that coming yeah. up. That, so that's at the breakfast? Yes, right after the breakfast. Oh, right after, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if you can stop by that, we definitely give you some information, what have you, to get you prepared yes. for the, the expo itself on June 20. Yes, but I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. So. We're all looking forward to it. Not <laughs> and also, folks, I want to mention that uh, on every third Thursday of the month, as we just referred to, we have a breakfast event here in Fairfax, 3999 University Drive from 7.30 to 9. Come on out. Love to have you there. And also the big expo on June 20. And that will be at the uh, Stacey Sherwood Community Center from 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. So you can see our website in there. Just you go in there, sign up, and join us. It will be a lot of fun. Any last word, ma'am, for the audience? Oh, wow. Um, you know, if you're uh, thinking about doing any projects mm -hmm. on your house and mm -hmm. you want to kind of give it a test drive, give me a call. Okay, great. I'll be happy to sit down with you. Excellent. Yeah. My name is Jennifer Keogh. You can see our website there. And uh, so you inform. So we are on Cox Channel 10 on Tuesday at 9 p.m. On Wednesday, right after midnight. So we have our show there. And also on Saturday at uh, 2 o'clock. So you have three chances to, to see us there. And uh, we put this program together to bring you information you can use. And also ideas. The reason we have Jennifer over here, because I do know that her services are not much known. And she's mm -hmm. definitely, sp that's a special service you bring to the table. Yeah. And not very much known. So now you know that it exists, and so that you can avail yourself of it or share it with other people. And it's very cost effective. It's not going to cost you a fortune to okay. do this, and it shouldn't. It shouldn't. My prices are on the website, and um, you know it's something anybody can can do. And it's certainly cheaper than buying a tile you can't take back. Very good. So well, thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you next time. As always, have a good day. Bye bye. This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available coffee, teas, chocolate, and other products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well.